Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So a few weeks ago I changed out some receptacles along a countertop in Clark, New Jersey uh, for the barber who actually cuts my hair. I've known him for quite a while now and um, he asked me to come to his house that he just bought and update the receptacles in the kitchen. So it uh, looks like some of this wiring or most of this wiring in the kitchen had been redone maybe about 20 years ago. Most of the stuff as far as the spacing and the branch circuit requirements were up to date. So they met the current code, which was good. So really all I had to do was just change out these receptacles and make sure everything was grounded and wired correctly. So uh, usually I like to pull these devices out before they put in a new backsplash there. And the, uh, the owner of the property did the backsplash himself. And <clears throat> so um, I didn't get there until after it was done. So sometimes getting these out of there can be a little, pain, a little bit of a pain in the neck when the ears on the yoke of the receptacle get pinned behind the tile uh, but I was able to work it here uh, the, the cutout was a little bit large but it was enough where I could work with it and cover it with a larger um, vinyl plate so anytime you're working with these receptacles you want to make sure that that box is um, flush to the surface to the finished surface that's what that code section I just posted uh, was about so um, once we take this receptacle out, what we're going to do is we're going to put in what's known as a box extender. Uh, it's, made by, it's a product made by Arlington. And basically what that does is it bridges the gap between the finished surface of the tile backsplash and the box, which was more than a quarter of an inch. So I had to put these in. The other thing that these extenders do is they make the device more sturdy inside the box. So when you go to plug something in, it doesn't wiggle. There's no wiggle room. Uh, so it's a really nice product, and I use it. I keep a lot of them on the truck because uh, I need to use them quite often. So here on the kitchen countertop, um, obviously GFCIs are required uh, serving any receptacle on a kitchen countertop. So what they did here is they ran the two separate 20 amp circuits, and they ran the wiring to this GFCI, and then another receptacle downstream from the GFCI. So what that's called is a line load setup. So what that means, the line is the power coming in to the receptacle and the load are the receptacles downstream. Uh, and the reason why we do this is, uh, is convenience and obviously the GFCIs cost a little bit more money than a normal receptacle. Uh, that's another reason why we do it. You could also put all of these receptacles on a breaker if you chose. However, that's a little inconvenient should you trip the GFCI receptacle, you would have to go out to wherever your panel was to reset the breaker. So we like to put these devices on the kitchen countertop just for conveniences. And that also goes for bathrooms and outdoor receptacles as well. So here I'm just making sure everything's wired correctly before I put the device in. It was, it was up to date. Um, we're gonna remove the old device and then put the new device in. Uh, this white device right here is the box extender that's going to beefen up that uh, receptacle. That just slides in between the wires here. And there's an opening, obviously, for the device. And then on the top and the bottom where the screws go in. Uh, so here the box is set back about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So it's kind of back there. Uh, so we had to use some long screws. But once we, attack, once we wire the device up to these pressure terminals here and tighten them down, uh, we'll push the device inside the box and then we'll tighten down the screws and put the finished cover plate on. I seem to be asked to do this work quite often. Changing receptacles, changing dimmers, light switches, replacing receptacles. Uh, so I take great pride in doing this and I do it well. And one of the most important things when replacing these receptacles in the kitchen here is that the terminations are done correctly. So here you strip back the wire about a half an inch and uh, these are pressure plates. So when you tighten down these terminals, the wires behind that, you don't want to put a fish eye on these wires. They go right behind a, me a metal plate behind the screw terminal and then you tighten down the terminal which tightens down the plate to the device. Uh, and proper termination is very important, especially in the kitchen where we have big appliances like toaster ovens, coffee makers, blenders, etc. Those use a lot of power, sometimes uh, up to maybe 1,500 watts or more. And so when you have high current 
going through this particular device right here from this device to the next device downstream if the termination fails uh, it could start a fire it's as simple as that the circuit breaker is not going to see a fault condition so it won't trip on that condition um, but it'll eventually just sizzle away and arc away uh, until the connection breaks which I've seen unfortunately too often which is probably why I'm there replacing them to begin with uh, but that wasn't the case here for this case here it was mostly aesthetics uh, with the new countertop and new backsplash uh, the devices need to stand out so that's why uh, this customer asked me to come in and do this work Once the terminations to the device are done, I like to do what's known as like a dry fit. So I will very uh, casually tuck these wires back into position the way they're going to sit and get the device to sit where it's going to sit before attaching the screws to the box. And the reason why I do this is so the device is not being manipulated by the screws. Rather, the device is where it's at because it wants to be there. That's where we want it to sit. Uh, I hope that makes sense to you, but I like to do a dry fit like this before tightening the screws and leaving it in position. And uh, this has been successful for me. Sometimes finding the screw hole in the box is difficult, uh, but I've done this for so long, I pretty much know how to find it, uh, which is just, uh, just comes from experience. And so this is just about it right here. This is the finished product. And so I wound up changing about six or seven devices, two GFCIs on this job in this kitchen in Clark. And uh, there you go. That's the finished product right there. That's what it looks like. That device and the plate should be always flush with the backsplash. And so I'll do the same thing here. And this one will just be a, a standard decor style tamper resistant duplex receptacle. And then we just repeat the process several more times until the kitchen backsplash is complete. Hey guys, just for the record, uh, each of these circuits serving the kitchen countertop were de-energized before replacing these devices. Uh, of course, if you want to work live, that's fine. I find if I could turn these circuits off before working on them, I could do a better job as far as checking wiring and opening things up. Sometimes if you leave that live and there's a funny splice in the back, in, back of the box that you might be checking out, something's loose, now you got a problem. Turn the circuits off if you know which ones they are. If you don't know which ones they are, find out which ones they are and then of course label them when you can at the circuit breaker. Awesome. Uh, I was trying to say, do you have any small one from this? I, I, I have one, yeah. Do you want one? Please. Yeah. Okay, okay very The last thing I was asked to do was to update these uh, dimmer switches. These are the old rotary incandescent halogen dimmers. So if you change out your existing recess lights and put your LED uh, trims in those recess lights, these dimmers may work for a little while, but eventually they will fail and you won't be able to turn the lights on or you won't be able to turn them off. I've seen both. So whenever we put LED trims in to existing recess lights, I always offer to change the dimmers as well because eventually you won't be able to use them. Uh, LED, Lutron makes uh, a fantastic dimmer that I prefer, and I prefer the Lutron brand. Um, 
And the reason why is I never get any callbacks with Lutron, or very rarely I should say that. So the, the kind of dimmer you're looking to replace the incandescent uh, rotary dimmers with is what's known as a CL, which stands, stands for compact and LED. That's what that means. So you're looking for on the box, the ones I'm putting in here are called Lutron CL Diva dimmers, and these are in white. These are pretty standard um, economy uh, dimmers. There's a lot more expensive ones, uh, but that's for another video that we can go over that. I love the Luchon brand because the stuff works. And again, because I never get any callbacks using that particular brand. Hey guys, if you like this video and you enjoyed the content, I uh, hope you'll hit the like button and you'll subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can see all new videos when they upload. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. I always like reading the comments and interacting with the people who subscribe to this channel. Um, so hope you guys are all doing well and uh, we'll see you soon in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.